to come to our uh, council meeting. I'd like to uh, make a warm welcome to those uh, residents and people that have joined us today in, in the in the crowd and those that are joining us online. <clears throat> I'd like to call the September 13th, 2022 council meeting to order at 9.01 a.m. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Blackfoot and the people of Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta. The city of Chestermere is also home to the Métis Nation, Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Our meeting today is also being broadcast live. With that, uh, let's begin. <clears throat> There's a few matters that I'd like to deal with just before we open, we um, move on to our agenda. Um, the, the first thing that I wanted to comment uh, on from our city's perspective and our residents is that we are saddened to hear of the passing of Her Majesty of Queen Elizabeth II last Thursday, September 8th. On behalf of the City Council and City of Chestermere, I extend my deepest sympathies to the Royal Family as they mourn the passing of their steadfast and resolute matriarch. During her 70 years of unprecedented reign, Queen Elizabeth II led with unwavering grace and made an immeasurable impact on many as Canada's sovereign. I ask everyone to join me for a moment of silence to honour her memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Great, thank you. <clears throat> um, with that, moving on to our next order of business is that I'd like to welcome the Chestermere's newest first responders. <laughs> a developing city like Chestermere requires its first responders' presence to grow alongside its population. One of Council's targets is to ensure firefighters, peace officers and RCMP expand as needed to keep up with residents' growth and required levels of service. We're delivering on our community, our commitment to our community safe, safety with our recent approval to add more RCMP officers and today with the addition of six new firefighters. Joining us here in council chambers are six members of our new class of freshly hired first responders. Adding these brave men and women to our team increases staffing levels around the clock and gives Chestermere Fire Services the ability to handle a variety of calls quicker and with greater efficiency. It lets crews handle two calls at a time if needed and be better prepared for larger issues and fires, all while focusing on firefighter safety and increased response times. This highly trained new crew brings with them advanced care paramedics capability, primary care paramedic skill, and years of fire experience. Also, we are proud to welcome Chestermere's first two female firefighters. Yay. We are truly excited to have you join Chief Coots and the rest of our exceptional first responders. We have no doubt our city is in good, capable hands, and we look forward to working with you to advance our goal of protecting this vibrant, growing city. <clears throat> we welcome you and wish you much safety and success. Thank you very much. <laughs> we do we want, to, want them to introduce themselves? They can come to the front and turn the mic around. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sure, why well, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> sure, our, new, our, our newest firefighting team, we'd love to uh, love to say hello. <clears throat> it's the, the mic is on. Yeah. Uh, Good morning. It, it, Good morning. Maybe if you just, it doesn't matter to have your back to us. Okay. It's just to the public, which uh, the camera is facing the other way. So if you come around okay. the other side. Yeah. So there's something on the other side. Yeah, just go to the other side. Okay. <laughs> Is it a horrible to go first? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay, do you have to turn it? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, my name is Colin Fraser. Obviously, I'm not a skilled person in this area. Um, but I bring uh, 12 years of emergency services experience. I'm an advanced care paramedic and a firefighter, so I'm very happy to be here and looking forward to it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Hi there. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, my name is Robert Beatty. I've been with Santa Work Fire for the past five years as a primary care paramedic and firefighter. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Haley. I am an advanced care paramedic as well and have been a firefighter with St. Albert and I'm really happy to be here. Fantastic. Morning. Uh, morning. I'm Taylor Verbluck. I bring nine years of experience uh, with an industrial, municipal, wildland and airport as well. Um, resident here in Chesmere, so I'm looking to give back to my community. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, my name is also Haley. Uh, <laughs> I bring four years of volunteer fire experience and I am a licensed paramedic as well. Thank you. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks again for uh, all you guys do. And it's really obviously important for our city to continue to expand um, our, all of our emergency services uh, and first responders. Uh, our city is a fantastic little city, which you'll soon get to know really well. Um, and we're growing very quickly, so that brings uh, positiveness and some challenges. <laughs> Thanks again for all of you being here today. <clears throat> with that, um, I'd like to move on with our City Council meeting and the adoption of our agenda. <clears throat> um, Councillor, are there any adoption, any items to amend the agenda today? Seeing none, hearing none? Okay. With that, could I get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Uh, Councillor Fote? I make the motion that we uh, <clears throat> adopt the agenda as presented. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Thank you. Passed. Period. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> okay, moving on to uh, we just we just presented our some of our proclamations, which was um, to welcome our new first responders. Um, so we're moving on to the adoption of the minutes. <clears throat> Um, Council, if I can get a motion to adopt the September 6, 2022 minutes. Councillor Hanley? Uh, I have a, a couple of uh, amendments to make okay. through the minutes. Um, in going through the minutes, uh, motion uh, 29, uh, 2209.06, motions 9, 10, and 11 of the meeting are in the wrong order. Uh, the first uh, uh, one that we actually did was we tabled the Clearwater. Then we uh, went to the master utility plan. Then we lifted from the table clear water, uh, where presently the, the minutes show of the motion as uh, amending the master utility plan, tabling clear water, and then lifting from the table. Uh, in addition, there's two other, uh, which are just minor grammar things on motion 17 and motion 29. Uh, any further updates, uh, update should be plural. Uh, and uh, on 29, proposed by administration at hearing, one of either the at or the jurying has to come out. Uh, and that's it. So apart from that, unless anyone else has any other questions, I'll make the motion to adopt some minutes as amended. Uh, Councillor Dean? Uh, yeah, I believe there's one more. Um, if memory serves me correctly, I believe that on motion uh, 2209-06-19, Just carried unanimously. I thought that uh, Mayor Colvin uh, voted against uh, that motion for accepting it as information. True. Yep. That is true. <clears throat> Good catch. Yep. Ledger, are you comfortable with those changes? Okay. All right. If I can get uh, a motion to adopt the minutes as amended. <clears throat> Councillor Hanley? I move that we adopt the minutes of September uh, 6th, uh, 2022, the regular council meeting, as amended. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Perry, thank you very much. Um, again, today, moving out of the, uh, I don't see us having our comments today about our action list. Is that something moving to the next council meeting then? Um, <clears throat> City Director Kim, um, will we be moving our action list to the next council meeting? Yes. Okay. We have we have to finish the uh, remaining um, restructuring of it. Okay. And then at that time, um, 
since we're back now uh, from break, it would be nice to get an update on uh, just some of our dates that we were looking at at the same time in our next council meeting. Okay. Which is uh, we just turned thirteenth. <laughs> and I'll maybe bring Turn the mic around. That's right. <laughs> How does that sound? Is that better? Our firefighters. Yes, yeah, perfect. Okay, good. That's perfect. Um, the other thing that we are working on in administration there in council is putting together our public action list that will be publicized, as well as our working action list that our administration is working on. So we will bring that forward um, for next council. Yeah. Our next council meeting is the 20th. So you'll be able to have that? Okay. Yes. Fantastic. So the public list as well as we'll work on our... Our in-house. Our in-house list. Okay. Our council list. Um, okay, moving on to oh, <coughs> second council. Sorry, <coughs> Councilor Dean. Sorry, uh, with council's indulgence, I'd just like to give a quick update on the action list for minor sports task force, if that's okay. Uh, so, council, just uh, for your awareness, uh, the minor sports task force is going to meet on Thursday night of this week, so the fifteenth. Uh, we were going to do Wednesday night, but realized uh, we conflicted with Energizer night, which all of those uh, organizations are also involved with. So uh, just for public awareness uh, that that task force is moving forward uh, and our uh, meeting will be on Thursday night uh, and uh, looking forward to bringing an update to council either at the next council meeting on the 20th, if we wish, um, and then with <coughs> proposed dates as one of the ideas on there will be to set kind of a meeting schedule uh, moving forward with that task force. Fantastic. Um, yeah, no, that would be great if we could have all, all of the updates provided for the 20th from both council and and administration. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, with that, um, all that information, if I could get a motion to accept that information as information. <laughs> 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 Councilor vote. I make the motion to receive the information as information. All right, thank you very much. All in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Uh, moving on to item F in our agenda, which is staff reports for information. Um, we have our first item of business, which is new fire hall and required apparatus presented by Fire Chief Jamie Coots from the City of Chestermere. Good morning. Mayor Council, thank you for having me uh, up here today. Actually, I just also want to say thank you for having our firefighters in. They were pretty <laughs> nervous, and uh, that was awesome that you made them go around and do all that stuff. So you made them even more nervous. I love First it. day is great. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, they were excited and nervous, right, great to, group. to come here and meet everybody and, and be part of it. Uh, we've had a really tough 24 hours, so... It was uh, interesting to have them at the table this morning when we were stacking up a bunch of medical calls and, mm. and our crews were going to training and every single firefighter for the city of Chestermere was in the building this morning. Oh, wow. Which turned out to be great timing for a couple of things. Um, and then, uh, you know, for them to come here next after seeing everybody and being together, which it happens once a year where we're all together. So it's it kind of a cool morning. You'll see some of those pictures coming in the coming days. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so really just uh, jump right into it. Uh, apparatus or our current fleet. Uh, this is kind of all part of the three-step process to get you up to speed on some of the challenges we're facing and some of the things we're working on. Um, the, the next one, I think, is medical levels of service. Last week, we talked about uh, general levels of service for the fire service and policies. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, moving on. And I just saw around it, but they're pretty you help me out on scavengers. Um, so our current apparatus fleet. Uh, th this is the first one. This is um, an aerial apparatus, 125 foot articulating platform. Um, and, and I'll be honest about this is I kind of thought this was overkill for a city this size when I was here uh, last time. Uh, and then we went to the Oakmere close fire. I don't know if you'll remember that one, but uh, this this single truck. Um, did the most damage in putting out that fire and then helping us later with the recovery and all the things that had to go with that fire. So uh, that one single fire changed my mind on that. And since then, um, I've seen what a critical piece this is. Um, we have tight housing, long lots, offset buildings, all the challenges that come along with having an articulating type uh, thing like this so we can go up and over the fire fight back and, and we can put the, the truck into places where we don't want to put people um, is, is a big part of it. Big pump, things like that. 
Now, with all of those capabilities, the bottom line, which we all hate to look at, um, $2 million replacement. So this particular truck is one of the ones that we were uh, looking at. Uh, if you remember way back to the workshop, uh, Councillor Funk had, had asked us about uh, rebuilding fire trucks and why don't we do that. Um, so we took those comments seriously and this is one of the trucks that we actually are, are looking at maybe spending less money, refurbishing it and making it last longer rather than buying a new one in 2027. So th thanks for that. This, those kind of challenges are that makes us better, right? That's awesome. Uh, Chief, um, just a question. So the, two, the 125 feet, what does that equate to um, given angles and whatnot for how high of stories and whatnot you can reach? Yeah, so it depends. Like um, all the buildings, I can I never know what everyone knows, but all the buildings that you've currently sent us through circulation, it would work for, for the height of those buildings. Yeah. The you know, one of the challenges moving forward is the size of the building. So not not as much the height as just the sheer volume. And and so um, I think there's some builders that in the group here. And so anything with a common attic space, even if it's only a foot, uh, anything that's even split with a parapet side to side. Um, so the challenge for us moving forward is another aerial device, but what that looks like. So probably not something so expensive as this or as big as this, but something to help with that capacity so that you could have two elevated master mm -hmm, streams. Mm -hmm. This one's more of a rescue elevated master stream. We'd probably look at something that's more of just less rescue and more put some water on high, right? So oh, I see. Um, yeah, five, six stories, no problem. More than that, we have to be careful. Uh, we always have to be careful with the developers, which is why we're so happy to be involved in that circulation yeah. document. Yeah. Um, where the fire lane is going to be, where our access is going to be. Right. Sometimes they try to sneak a little here and there. Well, we're just going to use this road as the fire lane, but the road is 25 more feet away. Exactly. exactly. So we have to be careful and always hold the, the developers to task and the builders to task on, you know, what's required in the code. And that's specifically to fit these types of trucks and our firefighting staff in the right place at the right time. So uh, everything I'm seeing so far, the, this truck can get us to the top like it, we need it to be the volume of those types of buildings and the size, how big they are, um, will help us determine what else we have to look at. And so one of the last slides, remember last time I was here, I had the bad news of we were gonna actually get to nailing down the millions. Sadly, that's the last slide today. So yeah, <laughs> um, it, it's definitely uh, coming and something we gotta talk about. So um, we're just running through our current fleet, right? Uh, this is a truck that we have, uh, ARU, which stands for Aquatic Rescue Unit. Um, so this handles all of our water, ice rescue, swift water, any of those types of calls. Uh, let's do a replacement for 2024. Um, they have a great program here in fleet services where they take all the trucks uh, at their required time for replacement and have a look at it and say, do we actually need to replace it or not? Um, our pumping equipment is more guided by the fire underwriter survey, NFPA, which and as, um, these types of trucks without the pump in it are more, you know, are they still in good shape? Can we get some more life out of them? How long do we go? So um, a lot of these numbers for this type of unit are flexible based on the use, the age, right? What, you know, did we change? Are we trying to use it for something different? Yeah. Um, so that's the estimated replacement right now. <laughs> Uh, this is what we'd call the bush buggy, so wildland firefighting truck, grass firefighting truck. Um, usually these trucks are a little bit jacked up. They've got pump and hole capability so that you can uh, drive it while you're spraying water all over the place, which is what this one has. Um, th these, this is probably the truck that makes me the saddest in my career, because I remember the first bush truck that we ever put together. We did it ourselves, and it cost about $13,000. So you can see the bottom line on this one's a long ways away from thirteen thousand dollars, but I also I guess thirty-two years is a long time to to go by. So this one always makes me sad to look at. Um, this is a command vehicle. Uh, so would we in the back roll out? It's got a command board, uh, another self-contained breathing apparatus. This would be more like the chiefs would come to a call, the bigger calls, and help people um, with the command function. Uh, it was due for replacement this year. Uh, they chose to replace one of the CPO trucks instead. So we just pushed it back farther in the rotation. Uh, this is frontline engine. So this is the this is the one that earns the money every day. Um, the current truck that we have uh, was due for replacement in 2018. It was put off for quite a few years. Um, it's estimated at a million dollars to replace this truck. This is definitely one that 
I'll be coming back sooner rather than later to talk about replacing this truck. If I ordered a brand new truck like this today, I probably could have it in 18 to 24 months. Um, this, this truck, uh, I'll just be real with you. This truck spends a lot of time in the shop. This truck's past its usable life. And uh, this is one of the ones that we definitely have to look at uh, sooner rather than later. Question for you. Uh, <clears throat> if, if you're looking at uh, getting a new one as well, um, does that mean that you would keep this as a backup or would you be looking to simply get rid of it? This particular truck we would just send away. Just get rid of it? Yeah. The backup to our pumper right now is our aerial truck okay. and we would keep it like that. So rather than having two engines, just have the truck and the aerial okay. is our current plan. It used to cost us now a new one in the yeah. fleet so we try to build our redundancy within the fleet rather than to have just the same truck stacked up one after the other so okay right uh, councillor vote um this truck here is it uh the thing that's causing the uh, nickel and diamond is it is it just the truck or is it there is it the, the bumper unit so uh, this particular one, so the motor's already been rebuilt once, about four years ago. Uh, it's got a, just shy of 170,000 kilometers, which is almost wow. unheard of in fire apparatus. Yeah. No, normal business for your vehicle, my yeah. vehicles, but in fire apparatus, not so much. Um, and it's kind of three components. So it's the chassis, yeah. the pump, yeah. and then the cabinets in the back. Yeah. And so uh, this particular one, uh, we've had trouble with the pump, we've had trouble with the chassis, and we're having trouble with the cabinets and, and a lot of rust issues on this particular truck. Uh, this, this truck gets a lot of use. Um, every single call that happens at the city of Chestermere, yep. there's like 90% of them, this truck goes on it. Um, so this gets more use than any other of our equipment in the fleet. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Narayan. So thank you through the chair. Uh, is this something that you can, uh, I don't know, trade in or uh, sell it to recuperate some of the cost at all? For sure. So uh, anything up to 20 years, there, there's some residual value, right? Um, and, it, and it depends on who's looking for a used fire truck. After 20 years, there's basically no market for used fire trucks. Uh, fire Underwriters lets us have a truck up to 20 years as a primary, as a backup for another five years. At 25 years, the Fire Underwriter Survey doesn't recognize any apparatus anymore. So after 20 years, you can imagine not too many people are looking for this truck unless it's as a backup um, and then they can keep it for five more years. And so um, there's some value. Um, if I was guessing, probably less than $100,000 on a truck like that right now. And it, it's sadly just because of the market. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, emergency response unit. So this one uh, can pull the trailer. It can go to medical calls. It can carry our gear around. Uh, today it's at the Live Fire Training Center with all of our firefighters. Um, definitely does. It's kind of the station duty truck. Um, whatever we got to pick up, drop off, take somewhere, this truck's doing the job. Uh, this is the Historical Society. It's just one of the trucks that's there. Um, it doesn't cost us anything. We, we didn't have to buy it. The Historical Society takes care of everything for us. We basically give it a place to live, a home to live. It's cool. Yeah, today's pretty awesome. Uh, Marine 116 is the boat that you see at the landing. It's, it's uh, there all the time, ready for staff to use. Uh, its replacement isn't until 2035. It's a relatively new piece of equipment still. Uh, works good. We're happy with it. Uh, the CDU is the backup to that. Uh, good till 2030. Um, at that time, would we get another CDU? Probably not. Probably some kind of smaller inflatable um, in the same price range. But um, definitely nice to have a backup. For us, though, one of the concerns, one of the harder things to figure out is always all the storm ponds. There's a lot of large storm ponds here. You can't put our big boat in there. You can't put our sea dew in there. So what do we do when there's problems there? So uh, it's one of the challenges that we're trying to figure out as we build bigger and bigger storm retention ponds around the city. Uh, this is a tender uh, for any of you that like Mack trucks. Oh, no, this is the rescue. So... Uh, so this is actually a wildland urban interface truck. 
um, what we'd call in the north. Everyone, everyone in the north that fights forest fires would be happy to have this truck. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest and upfront, I have no idea what that's doing here in Chestermere. It's uh, been converted to a heavy rescue truck. It runs about 200 pounds light of its maximum capacity every single day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is not not the best use for this truck. Um, I'm guessing that probably Rocky View County had this truck when it was part of that system and they bought it for fighting grass fires and doing those things. As the city of Chestermere is growing, this is one of the trucks that doesn't make that much sense here. This would be one of the ones that we'd be looking to um, trade this one off and actually get um, a heavy rescue, something that's built for going out on the highway, going out onto the main roads, carrying the heavy equipment that we carry for heavy rescue. Um, being a couple hundred pounds away from the max weight puts us over when we put four firefighters in this truck. So we actually limit the staffing on this to two <laughs> as part of the um, what's going on. Now this truck, um, because it's not quite 10 years old, just to jump ahead to your question, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this, this probably has over $200,000 in remaining value. All right? It's something that's it's more sought after. It's a newer truck um, for people that have forest fire issues. Um, there's a clientele that would buy this kind of truck. So in our plan would be to sell this truck and offset some of the cost of a new rescue truck to replace it. If that answers the questions I was going to get asked, I yeah. feel like I'm getting ahead there. Sorry. Um, this is a support trailer that they had. It was used for many different things over the years. It's not a big, heavily used piece of equipment in our arsenal. Um, and you can see on there, um, we'll be coming back later to talk to you about selling this unit. It's uh, it's kind of just taking up a parking spot and it's not really helping. So um, I think we'll probably just end up reducing that out of the fleet. How long uh, is it, sir? How long is it? Yeah. Like, like, well, I don't know. It's pretty long. I, I would guess uh, 24, 26 feet. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Off the top of my head. Uh, this was the Mack truck I was talking about. If there's any big truckers in here. You know, a person loves a Mack truck. Uh, this is a 2,500 gallon um, with a big 1,250 gallon per minute uh, tender for us. It's still got um, a lot of usable life. It's a good apparatus. We're happy to have it uh, anywhere where there's no hydrants. So um, as Chester Mayor took in some of the other lands that didn't have hydrants, obviously this was a good tool to have in the arsenal. Um, we use this truck a lot when we're uh, out for a fee for service working for Rocky View County. Um, so this is a uh, just haul water, pump water. It's a, kind of a big water truck for us. <laughs> uh, side by side, mostly used around the trails or the beaches. You've probably seen our crews out cruising around the city. Um, getting to those access places where it's hard to access with a big truck. Uh, still good for quite a few years. Good unit to have. Um, so again, there's the years and the different apparatus, right? So apparatus, uh, the metrics that we use when we look at apparatus are the levels of service and policies we talked about last week, standard operating guidelines, which will come in after you give us levels of service and policies you want us to follow. Uh, Fire Underwriters Canada, we talked about that interchange, that connection with the insurance industry. The National Fire Protection Association, right? They're the ones that kind of put the standards in of how we put the chassis, the pump, and the body together. Um, and then staffing, and then most importantly, budgets, right? You can only buy what you give us money to buy. So um, th there's the current fleet and what we're thinking of doing with it before we switch to the, the expansion. How's your fault? Well, with your trucks that you have to replace, is there pretty well only one place that you can go buy, buy those things? No, not at all. It's okay. uh, I mean, it's not like buying a pickup truck, Yeah. but uh, there's eight Canadian dealers. Okay. Uh, there's probably 25 we could access across North America. Um, pretty well all of the chassis come out of the States. So yeah. what the American dollar is doing is a big factor. Yeah. Um, over the years, there's you, you watch the American dollar closely. Um, you know, if we can swing 5% and save yeah. tens of thousands of dollars, you know, we'll, we'll be back sooner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if the dollar was at par a week from now, I'd be pounding on the door trying to get in here and ask you for stuff, right? right. So so we watch all of those things. Um, we <laughs> prefer to buy a Canadian build. Um, 
typically they're better at making sure that compartments are all heated, they're protected from the cold weather, they're better for the roads that we have here and the climate swings that we have here. Um, not saying you can't buy it out of different places. Right. Most of the aerial trucks, for example, come out of Wisconsin or Tampa right. Bay, Florida. So um, we, we are limited by that, but I would expect any trucks that we would uh, ask for a bid on that we would get six or seven uh, bids from across Canada and the United States uh, on any of the trucks that we're trying to get. Thank you. I would hope for at least that many. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Councillor Dean? Uh, through the chair to the chief. Um, just as an education question, I'm wondering when someone puts in a phone call to uh, calls 911, uh, is the dispatcher on the other end aware of all the apparatuses that we have uh, as a city or is it decided on uh, at the when the call comes in or is it a combination of the two? Good, great question. So it goes to 911. Uh, their only job really is to alert our station and then our captain that's running our shift uh, or whichever officer is running our shift will decide from there. So uh, they would alert us and call for engine 116 is our, our title. That uh, would be that frontline engine. Um, and then from there, the captain listens to the call. So is, are we going to help Rocky View County and they need a bush truck and a tender? Are we going to do a fire in the city where we're going to need our aerial truck and our engine? Um, is it going to be a medical where maybe we're going to take a smaller vehicle to avoid some wear and tear? So really, once it's alerted through 911 to our officers, they make the decision. We, we give them the latitude to do that. Certain things, uh, a confirmed structure fire would have a list of apparatus and they would tone those all out at once. They would call back more firefighters to help us. We would call our partners in Rocky View to come and help us automatically. So depending on the call type, um, there could be also like a tile down effect um, <coughs> depending on how serious of a call that it is. That's your question. Yeah, it, okay. totally. We, <laughs> I, just, I just had a personal experience with calling and I was, asking emergency like the dispatcher i was saying that you guys had the boat please release the boat because the emergency was in the middle of the lake so i didn't know the address other than the middle of the lake and so right, uh, yeah. that's that's why i was just wondering about how that uh, structure works yeah and, and so i mean that's a great one and and you guys have done a lot of great work uh, the city's done a lot of great work trying to get people to put their addresses on the lake side mm -hmm. which helps us a lot when we're mm -hmm. out there um, it also helps us to have guys like Brent Paquette on the fire department that knows who lives in every house and where it is and yeah. has lived here since, uh, you know, it was a few thousand people. So uh, depending, you know, sometimes the addressing is not that easy for us. Sometimes the, we're only as good as the information that gets relayed to the dispatcher. Right. So if they, you know, tell us it's a house fire and it turns out it's three house fires or if they tell us it's a car fire but it's actually a house fire. We're only as good as the initial information. And so that's why that engine goes out the most of the time. Um, I would say that that's kind of our Swiss army knife. Uh, we take, you know, as much as we can on that front engine and then the rest of the people come in and help us with whatever we have to pick after that. So, okay, are we ready for the next slide? Yeah, sure. This is the big one. All right, uh, station 117 which would be an expansion station here in the city of Chestermere. Um, we've gone through two master plans, right? The city's growing. Uh, if anyone's been down 284 and 240 to that intersection anytime recently, obviously you see the amount of dirt getting moved there and the infrastructure going in. Um, we were, I was here last week, got to sit through the presentation on everything that's happening on the uh, east side of the city. Um, you know, there's, there's challenges ahead. And so one of those challenges is to build a second station, to find a good place for it, right? To find some land that we can afford or access for it. Um, and then to build something that makes sense for size. Uh, you look at some of the big fire stations in Calgary, for example, some of those are too big for what we're looking for. Uh, we don't want to make it too small, but we're not, we're not trying to build a palace here either, right? So going through, trying to figure out uh, what we actually need, what we're gonna put there, what the growth around it looks like, how that fire station interacts with the city around it is key. Um, I think you probably talk to our neighbors currently and they're not in love with having us right across the street from them. So we have to be careful when we go into a new neighborhood, you know, what, what that looks like and, and how we interact with them. Um, sirens are, 
a bit much, I guess, at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning for some. Um, so all of those are challenges of building a new fire station. Um, we, we have what we call Plan 2025, which might change to a different number after we talk with you folks, but um, at, uh, we call it 2025, and it, it's to try to figure out all these answers. And so as quickly as possible, we want to um, have you ask us the questions you need to ask us so that we can come back with the answers that you need from us. Um, while in the background, people are working on the financing and, and uh, you know, these are just the capital costs. Obviously, there's operating costs for more firefighters and, and equipment as well. So uh, it's a big number at the bottom. It's a, it's a scary number as you uh, grow a city and as you expand a fire service. Um, these are the toughest conversations that people like me have with uh, Mayor and Council. Um, I've been through this process quite a few times. Uh, I'm, I'm here to answer questions. I'm, I'm here to uh, talk with you about these things and, and help everybody understand. Um, to me, one of the most important things right now uh, that I need you to understand is that these are estimates. We don't have the full truck build documents. We don't have the... Um, I wanted to bring you something that was realistic um, so that we could start to have these discussions and I could answer your questions. Okay. Uh, Councillor Hanley? Uh, yeah, I, I guess my question, Jamie, is since you have this experience, is there a way that we can sort of put a peg in, on the wall and say, you know, by January 1st, 2026 or whatever, we need a station up and going. And then, uh, as you indicated before, to order some of these trucks, it takes 16 or 18 to 24 months. And then it's going to, then it's going to, so that backs that up like two years, and then you go, how long does it take to actually build the village, right? <laughs> so, and, and if that's going to take like two years to do then we sort of like, oh, okay, so then we need to decide this and, and get the, the pieces in place leading up to it. And so, to me, I would think we're going to be relying on, on your past experience and your knowledge of sort of, if we want to have something operational by this date, this is the, you know, and things are going to go wrong, so we're going to have to build in buffers. 100%. I, um, you know, so stations and trucks don't necessarily put out the fires. The people do. Yeah. Right? So for us, the number one priority is to make sure that our staffing is up to handle the call volume yeah. and, and the types of calls. Uh, second to that is getting the apparatus um, so we can get to the call and do the work we have mm -hmm. to do. Uh, and the third priority, which probably sounds funny, is to get the other station so that we can spread out our response mm -hmm. and spread out our team and our trucks. Um, and, and you're right, this all takes a long time. It's why I'm here. It's also why I said I'm not panicking, but, it, but I am excited to be here and, and to start to go through this with you. Uh, we've had a lot of talks just in the four months that I've been here uh, and in my time previously that I was here with different uh, groups in the city to say, you know, where could we secure some land? Um, is there land available? What does the future development look like? Um, I, I guess one comment that I would have is um, the time is now. The time is now for us to have these discussions, um, you know, this this year and to start to figure out some of these pieces, uh, what we can afford, what we can't afford, where it has to go, how will we build that out. Uh, a lot of the staff here, when I talk to them, they're very helpful, they're very friendly, they're very um, passionate about the city and what they're doing, um, but we're always held up by... Um, what does council, what does the mayor and council want? And so, um, not to put extra pressure on you, but certainly um, one of the factors that we have to get through is, are we going to do this? That's the first question. Then we start to move through, how are we going to do this? What does it look like? How much is it going to cost? Um, so those, those are the first <laughs> questions. Jamie, have you seen the, um, have you guys talked about the location behind um, Fast Gas on Chesterman Boulevard? I don't know if it's as easy for me to share my screen. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> are, you, are you talking about like where Synergy is sort of in that? Yeah. 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 Um, sort of. There. Okay. So, so the two that they're building a, a plan for you to look at currently is north of Sewer Station 13. So on the far south end of Rainbow Road, the big sewer station that's there. So just north of that on property that the city owns. 
Um, and then the second one, I don't actually even know if I'm allowed to talk about it yet because um, it's part of a real estate deal that you guys are working on. So yeah, there's another um, location. So one one question is, was, uh, was this location here, if you can see on the screen? Yeah. This is fast gas right here. Okay. <clears throat> this is synergy here. Was this land here is uh, owned by the city. And so one of the questions was, is that is it advantageous for to have a fire hall here that allows it to go across and go north as much as it allows it to go south <clears throat> and go back to the east if needed? So one of, uh, last time I was here and a little bit this time, uh, we talked about this location a lot. Um, last time did kind of stop talking about that location there's a, a few problems there one is it's only a kilometer and a half from other, our other station so yeah. as far as spreading out your resources it doesn't really help us spread out our resources we if we were going to do that we'd be better off to rip out a park and build some more bays and just keep going with the fire station that we had okay um so we would like to be i guess more to the west and more to the south i know a lot's coming in the north um that there's some land that we're talking about that would uh, access 284 really quickly, yeah. which would allow us a really great north-south corridor um, on, on that road. Um, and then Rainbow Road, I think, is uh, kind of a critical collector on that side of the lake for that whole part of the city. So um, we'd want to have good access to Rainbow Road going north and south again yeah, um, so that we could branch off there. So... Um, is 284 is our is our border with Calgary, right? So and and again, this is all part of talking with all of the development people, right? So as we get developed all the way out there, and that turns into a paved road, um, a yeah. paved kind of master road for us, where there's not going to be as much traffic, for example, as Rainbow, um, yeah. gives us really fast access. So it's not just about being close to things; it's about access, right? It's mm -hmm. about how we're going to get through intersections. It's about um, who's going to be on that road, sharing that road with us. And so, um, 240, 284, um, Chestermere Boulevard, uh, all of these are key, important connectors, um, not just for the city. Um, but also for what we're looking at as a fire department, right? So how can we, it might be a longer route to get there, but we'll get there faster and with less chance of interacting with the public, public which is yeah. what we're looking for. Okay, thank you. Councilor Naran. Thank you through the chair uh, and to the chief. I think I would definitely agree when you say that the time is now. Um, obviously, uh, this is uh, quite important uh, for the city given our growing population. Um, I think we would definitely, you know, uh, again, sooner than later, appreciate more of a timeline, you know, kind of what uh, Councillor Hanley was saying uh, with uh, more precise numbers, because, again, sooner than later, we'll have to start accounting for these uh, in our budget as well. And I do have a question, maybe for administration, uh, whether, you know, how much of this project is or may be covered through um, offsite levies, if at all. I don't know if anyone can answer that. Do you want to handle it or I can jump in there too? Okay. Um, so off-site levies um, are, are an incredible program, right? Uh, you have a lot of off-site levies right now that you're working on with developers. And so fire stations definitely fit into off-site levies. Um, the key is always deciding what you're going to put into your off-site levy package, right? Recreation buildings versus roads versus, you know, what, what are we going to put in there? Um, fire halls get lumped into the capital cost of all the things that we're doing. So if you can say, hey, there's a need in this area and it's driven by development, yes, we're going to have an off-site levy for a fire hall. Um, at the same time, the fire hall is competing with recreation. It's competing with the roads. It's competing with a, you know, an upgrade to your sewer or, or your lift station. Um, and so um, if we were just dealing with the fire station, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Let's put in the offsite levies. Um, sometimes, though, there's more things, and this would definitely be the case for the city of Chestermere, there's more things to ask for and build than the offsite levies can cover. And so, whether we put it in the offsite levy package or put it to taxes, I know that nobody likes to hear that. Mm -hmm. I live here too. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, it has to get funded. And so um, for us, it's important to look at all of the things, MSI funding, the federal tax, um, you know, uh, gas tax, uh, offsite levies, uh, and taxes, right? And so um, 
and, and community safety, I guess all of the things under the banner of community safety um, are often in most places um, paid for by taxes. No. Right, the people that live here pay for for the those safety pieces. Um, when I look at the things and and the programs that you have for offsite levies, do I think that there's room for a fire hall? Um, well, probably not. Right, you, you've made a lot of great deals and you're doing a lot of great work with the developers um, to throw that on top. I'm not the expert, right? Um, by any stretch of the imagination, um, I just. I think it's, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say like, there's already a lot of things being funded by development, um, which things you pull in and out are hundred percent up to you to decide. Um, for us, it's important to look at all of the funding options, right? The, the federal gas tax, the MSI, the, the uh, offsite levies, and then taxes after all of those things. Um, I guess I was hopeful that there would be more money released after COVID and there would be more access for communities to try to get large dollars for large projects. Um, there hasn't been yet, but uh, we're, we're waiting to see. So um, I don't know if that answers your question or it not. It does. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, it's, it's obviously a priority for our community as it's growing quickly. Um, and just so we understand the parameters, um, is, is it essentially seven minutes from is the key to everything? <laughs> okay, so there's a few things, right? So it's a 10 minute rule. We take three minutes off for the 911 call and the processing of that and putting our people in the trucks. Okay. Um, and so that leaves us seven minutes typically. Um, and then how we would figure that out. So the plans that we're ready to bring to you and the mapping that we can bring to you to show you the different locations would be based on traveling the registered speed limits on the roads that we would take to different calls. And so, um, by luck or by design, the first station, because it was attached to Chesmer Boulevard, um, really helped out, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was a good connection to the, to the city. As we grow more to the west, more to the south, and more to the north, um, that's where this challenge is in. And so we're flirting with that seven minutes right now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as we continue to build out, um, we're past that. How that affects the builder is if we can't get there in that time, they have to build to a different code. They might have to do things like adding sprinklers to a structure. They might have to build the structure out of different materials. Of course, those are all costs. The builder doesn't want more costs. The buyer doesn't want more costs. So they look back to the city to say, help, help us out, build another firehall so we can build at this code. Um, and so those are all the dance that we have to do as we develop, as, as the fire department interacts with uh, different parts of the city, as you give us direction as mayor and council, it, it's that, you know, what's, our, what's the city willing to take the cost on for versus the builder or the buyer of the home at the end, right? Um, so for us, if you look at seven minutes, we need something west and south to cover the rest of the pieces of the city where we have challenges. I'll be open and honest. We have challenges in Kinnenberg right now. Um, the transportation hubs down to that area are tighter, smaller, um, slower speed limits. Uh, there's schools, right, that we have to interact with. And so um, we have some challenges there to the south. Uh, and then, you know, as I sit on that hill looking out over everything that's being built out on the west side of the city, um, I think I better get back to my office and hurry on some of this stuff. <laughs> um, and it changes week to week. We make the crews do weekly drive-throughs to the to the new areas, and um, the concern is is rising. So yes, it's seven minutes of drive time on main roads at the speed limit that's posted for those. Right. So so again, back to two eighty four as an example I gave earlier. We're we'd be excited to get to that road because it's probably going to be paved. It's probably going to be sixty or maybe even something a little higher. Um, the faster we can get to a bigger road with a higher speed limit, the faster we can get to the fire. Once we get bottleneck down into uh, some of the different areas, it becomes tough to get there. Um, you know, so if you know you get uh, concerns from the residents saying, "Man, people are parked in the street and it's hard for us to drive here and there." Imagine driving a truck five times, six times as big as the vehicle they're driving. So um, access up from the south, coming across 240, coming up uh, helps us, right? Helps us get to the, the call faster. Um, and we always say that that seven minutes, it doesn't belong to us. 
It belongs to the people that are waiting for us. And so for us, it's always trying to make sure that we have a healthy response, but that we're not putting other people in danger while we get there, right? But that we're getting the right resources there as quickly as we can. And so um, that seven minutes belongs to the person that called us, and we're just trying to use it as best we can. Okay, great. Um, Mr. Handel? Last but not right, good. You, you mentioned that uh, you were considering the area of, uh, you know, south of the, down by lift station 13. Uh, but then, you know, what comes to my mind here is then there's all these other items that are in your play. Those, that bridge is going to be replaced, right? They're going to be expanding that road down there. We have a fire station and that location, and those things haven't happened yet. Did those become the bottlenecks? Did they become, you know, because there's a proper order that we got to do this in, and we got to make sure everything is lined up and that, you know, it's almost like you, you, it sounds like you need a task force to say, we need to establish a location, we need to, you know, and go through the various steps. 100% why I like to be on this side of the podium. <laughs> and I, I'm just here to help you on your side to uh, to figure these pieces out. Uh, there's no question when we talk about this, whether we're at planning and development, whether we're with public works, doesn't matter who, what group we're talking to, finance. Uh, um, there's a lot of challenges that we have to figure out. Um, and so certainly we build our plan and we have our dates and all the things that we're hoping for. That has to fit into a much larger, more complex plan um, that you get to hear about every Tuesday um, and more often. So um, I, I don't disagree that it would be nice to have a committee or a task force working on this with us. Uh, certainly would be open to whatever suggestion you have. Um, my job is to bring you as much of the information as you can tackle at a time that you can tackle it and to work with the other parts of the city administration to make this work out. Um, for me, number one priority, keep the residents uh, and visitors for the city of Chestermere safe. Uh, second to that, keep our firefighters from getting hurt. And so um, all of our plans are wrapped around that community safety piece, right? So how do we meet all of the obligations to keep the citizens safe while keeping our firefighters safe at the same time. Um, <clears throat> Jamie, so just to be clear, uh, so from that list station 13 site, you believe that you would be in the proper timing distance to, for example, Highway 1 where uh, north to Rainbow Road when that gets developed? No. So the problem with the lift station site is it's a bit too far south. Yeah. So then as, so we'd be okay when the first half of the north stuff got developed. Uh, after that, we'd be jammed up again. So we're trying to find a site where, like, the full build out of the city of Chesmer, we'd like to keep it at two fire halls with its current borders. I don't know if we're going to get more land and build more, right? But with its current borders, um, if we plan it right, if we do it right, I think we could keep it at two fire halls. Um, if we don't think far enough ahead and we don't plan it right, we might have to look at three. We might have to anyways when, when we look at the build out to the north. Um, and, and so it's always give and take, right? So if I, the more north I move, the less I can help out Kinberg and the development down there and whatever happens along the south with the, the city on lands to the south. Um, the more south I move, the less I can help out with the stuff to the north. Mm -hmm. um, our current fire station will be able to help with all the stuff to the east for quite some time. We're, we're well positioned mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I'm not worried about the east development. I'm worried about the, the south portions of the city and the west development. Um, I, I know that I also have to worry about that north development, but uh, I guess a lot like you, I I only have so many eyes to look at so many things. And and so we are trying to, again, that was a, some of that land we talked about closer to 284 would give us really fast, really good access to the north and to the south by using some of those bigger cut across roads. 240 is being paved as we speak. So that, that helps move some vehicles in a, in a good location for us. Um, you know, there's some paving coming up on the north parts of 284, mm -hmm. which are gonna help us. And, and so um, it's looking at all of those things and then still finding, um, so why, sorry, I probably didn't really answer your question very well about the fast gas part. Um, that That's, that intersection is not a place to be dumping fire trucks out. Um, it would probably need like a big traffic circle or something to make it safe for our trucks to dump out there properly. Um, and, and I don't know if that's in the transportation plan. It also has like, that's a hub. That's where all the utilities that come into the city come into that piece of land. And so it kind of, 
you have to be careful where you build a building there. You as a developer, you know what I'm talking about, right? So yeah, it, uh, it's more that um, it'd be similar to 16th Avenue, where the fire department is in Calgary, um, and how they uh, they control the lights there, and then they also have a um, an automatic arm that lifts up that allows them to turn across traffic uh, when there's there, there's for sure ways to do it. I yeah. mean, that our rule at the fire hall is always start at yes and move to no. Yeah, <laughs> um, we, we've done that exercise a lot of times on that piece of land, and okay. um, although it's nice because we own it, um, yeah, it's not ideal. It's too close to the other one. It doesn't yeah. help us to the south or or okay. uh, mostly to the south that much. So that was. Yeah, because we are like if if we do end up expanding southward, we were look we were potentially considering a third um, down south uh, if we expand south as needed. Yeah, so if we look at covering the city with three stations, um, you'd build one southwest, one and one northwest. Uh, we also have to think about our neighbors. So our neighbors in Calgary are building a fire hall at East Hills. Right, the planning's out for that. They're getting prices right now. Yeah. So as we look at our service agreements and how we're going to work together with Calgary and Rocky View County, right? What's Rocky View County going to do to protect Conrich, for example? Like right now, we're first up and help with Conrich, but if they build a fire station close to Conrich, so we also, yes, we have to look at the inside of our borders. But part of my job is to look at the outside of our borders and the partners that uh, we work together with, so that uh, what I don't ever want to see both as a fire chief and as a resident <laughs> is a fire hall across the street from another fire hall in Calgary. <laughs> uh, that would be poor planning and make us all look bad. So as we look at our neighbors and what they're doing, um, there's a lot of factors in, in all of this. And so, um, you know, and, and that's the fire hall and the trucks and we have to do the operational pieces, the, the equipment and the people and the, it, it makes my head spin and I only have to worry about that one piece. So mm -hmm. as I come to talk to you and you try to fit it into the other 500,000 pieces that you're trying to manage, um, I feel a bit guilty for being here and, <laughs> and having to talk about this. Nope. Um, that being said, it's important stuff that we have to talk about. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Councillor Funk? Uh, through the mayor to Jamie. Um, I appreciate that there's a lot of unknowns um, and a lot of questions and stuff. Um, that have been brought up. Um, I'm wondering, what do you need to be able to put together some plans um, to identify uh, locations that will cover different areas um, and keep you within the response times and different options and stuff that we can look at to move forward? Um, and also along with the budget, um, currently there's eight out of your 12 vehicles out of your apparatus that are due for replacement, either past due or do in the next five years. Um, so I think that's a pretty major budget and we need to look at it, how we're going to plan that through. Um, wondering if you'd be able to put together some plans and stuff of what that might look like, um, what kind of, what that would look like and what you would need for resources to do that. So, so 100%, uh, we're working on all that stuff. Um, if you went up to the planning department and to the mapping people specifically, they would probably look away if you said my name. <laughs> they're, they're working on a lot of things for us right now. Um, planning and development's doing great work with us, trying to figure out those pieces. So um, our, our thought here was to bring you kind of level service policies, the high level stuff, um, show you the, the apparatus and, and the future and what that looks like. Um, next time we have a pretty pressing piece on the uh, medical how we're going to handle medical calls here in the city. Um, but after that, um, that's kind of give you some idea of the challenges and what we're working on. And, and then um, as soon as October uh, or whenever you tell us it's okay, we're happy to be back here and digging into the, the weeds, right? And to start showing you the actual plans and, and some more coordinated costs and, and things like that. So um, we're, we're ready when you're ready. Um, we're just trying to... I guess start with some broader scope things so you can understand the challenges and and as we get into those challenges uh we're more than ready to start talking about that okay well thank you very much jamie <clears throat> are there any further questions council uh, it doesn't seem to be thank you very much for your time today thank you great presentation thank you. Um, with that if i can get a motion to accept that information from <clears throat> on the from jamie in regards to our bar requirements um, that'd be great. Thank you, Councillor Folt. I make the motion to receive the fire presentation as information. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Carrie? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.
Thank you. All right, with that, moving on with our agenda, we'll be moving on to item number two in our staff reports for information, which is our dog park, um, which is being presented today from Carly Davies. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good, Good thank you. Good morning, Council. Uh, the rest of my presentation will be through the CAO to the Mayor and all of Council. Thank you. Um, so I'm just bringing forward another update from, from our last uh, update back in July. I uh, just let you know that our project is actually pretty much on track on our last dates discussed. Um, so as we know, we're talking about our council priority project, the dog parks, which was for 195,000. Uh, last time when I came back on July 19th, council asked a few questions of us to, oops. Okay, <laughs> that's okay, to bring forward. Okay, thank you. In our uh, with the administration, uh, house before the end of September, uh, the development community was to reach out to them to talk about uh, more dog uh, parks and spaces for opportunities there, um, along with uh, the Alta Link that is uh, north of Waterford. Uh, the RFP we discussed as well was for some new opportunities of fencing of different heights, uh, different types, and hopefully to get some better pricing in. Um, there was also the uh, investigation of looking into assessment to see what the uh, value of homes are next to, to off-leash dog parks. And then also a construction opportunity was to uh, go for October if the circumstances weren't. So I'll start with the committee. Uh, as I said, W. D. Mayor Folt, uh, there's gonna be, there was also actually Cam, who's the Director of Community Operations, uh, CEO, and then our Communications Manager and myself are, uh, are the committee right now, as we are. Um, we looked at the uh, existing plans that we had with the last three dog parks that we went out to uh, public engagement and we reviewed the uh, feedback from there. We have come up with another design, uh, which was moved the location from the Aspenmere one just to the south. Um, in this area, there will be less parking on the street, which seemed to be the uh, largest contention. Uh, there's access for parking off Paradise Road, which we have confirmed through uh, a consultant, an engineering consultant, um, in pl and planning. And originally, there was three dog parks, and they added up to uh, five acres, including the parking zone which was 0.13 acres uh, for the Aspenmere one. And our new design is actually a total of over five acres, uh, but it's just in one location. Uh, so this included two sections and the parking, which I'll actually go forward. It might end up being three sections, so we might have three dog parks, but just in one location. Um, and then we, uh, the larger areas were also requested by council. So we actually, even though there's not three different locations, we're, um, we feel that we are making positive uh, advances on most of the requested items. So in our new design here, as you can see, it's just off Windermere Drive North, uh, and it will be, I guess that's east of Paradise Road. Just like the number one one, which was Aspenmere before, we're just down to the south of that. So the MR33, we call it, which is the, um, the pathway trail, I guess you could say, that runs from Paradise Road down to the existing dog park now. Uh, we were running north of that, and now that's our border now for running south. In this one, we will have a larger area for all dogs, and then we'll have a smaller caged off area for um, training and other facilities. So GIS, um, I was able to get in between Jamie's requests and did a, a little bit more of a detailed plan here. So you, as you can see, we've got 3.0 acres in the north section and then two smaller sections of one acre each um, that are the north and south uh, running uh, lengthwise. And then at the bottom there, there's the parking lot. Uh, that would be about 25 plus stalls, just depending on how we want to design it in there. Uh, is what we figured was required for this amount of space. Um, there is a little bit of parking along Windermere Drive, but just with the bus stop and um, other 
implications that are there, there isn't too much street parking. So we want to make sure that that was a good size for people to go there. It also has a lot of uh, walkability as well. Like you can come in from two or three sections there from the uh, east and then along the sidewalk from the, the west and obviously from the Alta Link from the south and north. Um, if you look in the green square detail too, that one is the one that we're still discussing with Alta Link. Um, one of our fence lines is a little bit close to one of the towers, so it might end up being where we actually have three, like I mentioned, three separate dog parks where the 3.5 acres will not be attached to the one acres below, but it will be a few mere steps just to get through. That's just so we can have compliance with their towers. Um, then going forward with the open house, as we discussed, uh, we've decided it's going to go on December, or sorry, September, not December 27th. Uh, we're going to have it here at the City Hall foyer. Uh, 5 30 to 7 p.m. Uh, and then if the weather is depending we'd like to do a more of a site tour from 7 30 to 8 after that. Uh, we've got curb signing that signage that's going out this week. Uh, we just wanted to wait our RFPs are coming in actually today is closing and so we felt it was necessary to have that pricing in to be the most informative for the open house. That's why we pushed it to the later September just to make sure that we had all the information for that uh, that meeting. Um, the curvature signing will give residents lots of uh, notification and we're going to put the sign right on the site. Uh, that will likely go out this week. Uh, letters to the adjacent residents as well, uh, notifying them of the open house. And Deputy Mayor Folk was speaking of canvassing as well uh, in that neighborhood to ensure that people are aware of the open house and to, to, to check it out. Um, communications is also doing a website link as we did before. Uh, this will have all the information. GIS has made an interpretive map as well, which is very helpful uh, for people to come and make a comment and see what the plans are for this project. Um, at this point, a notification of location. Um, we feel like we have extensively looked through the rest of uh testimere and there's not many any places that we do own that would facilitate a site like this so um to the best of our knowledge we feel that this is the best suited site based off of what everybody else has said already um but we'd still like to go forward with that open house as discussed before um so we would like to also bring back that information from that open house and then from the rfp that we will receive today uh on october 4th to council for a decision for construction um, again, with the development community, uh, before reaching out for the Waterford, there was some concern of uh, drainage. They have quite a bit of uh, water gathering there that we've noticed. So we're going to wait until uh, that landscaping is cleaned up before we approach them with the <laughs> discussions of that area as well. Um, I don't think we need another dog beach. <laughs> we've already got one. So we just want to make sure that some of the areas that we're discussing are um, uh, actually potential um, opportunities. Uh, and then we've also been discussing with developers uh, in other, um, that to include off-leash parks and other opportunities, but um, again, a lot of the uh, outline plans are completed with some in there. We're just discussing on which exact places. Um, there are some discussions as well. Uh, I know as Jamie just mentioned too, you guys have lots of priorities, so just ensuring that dog parks is one of them on the list for uh, developers to include in their areas. Uh, like I said, the RFP will come out today or will be completed today at 4 p.m. So we are meeting as a committee on, uh, I believe tomorrow actually, uh, September 14th anyway, to discuss uh, the different pricing that came in and to do the evaluations of those. We will also bring those into comparative styles for the open house and to bring to you guys on October 4th. I assume as our committee we will have the evaluation completed for what we've put in for the evaluation criteria and bring that forward as an already evaluated <coughs> um, uh, parcel for you to read. Um, we In this one, we went for, the like I said, the different styles, the different heights. We asked for the foyers. We've asked for the gates. Um, we've asked for uh, the, four, I put it 4,000 lineal meters just to make sure that we covered some of the areas there. Uh, we may or may not have to increase or decrease that depending on what AltaLink approves. Um, the pricing will also help us determine um, what we can discuss at the open house, just to make sure that these plans are uh, doable for October construction uh, based on their uh, availability and their pricing. Uh, the assessment, we're still investigating that part. I hope to bring that back to you guys on October 4th, if we can get in. 
Uh, as I mentioned, the Alta link, we are just dealing with that one green section on uh, making sure that they have access to their towers and just figuring out that uh, that location there. There was, uh, they were very um, gracious to let us go in on our existing request and just change our design rather than having to bring in a whole new example and set in those weeks. So Alta link has been very um, good to work with for us, our location, and they don't uh, foresee any issues with this. It's, I mean, it's the same material, same stuff. It's just the one tower that we're dealing with, which we can finish no problem. Um, so it looks like uh, as long as our vendors come back with some information today uh, and tomorrow we can review that. Uh, construction could still happen on October 4th. Um, I would assume we would get like posts in, or I mean after October 4th, I'm assuming we could get posts in and then work on that for the rest of the time. Um, and I would like to bring this back on October 4th for a decision to proceed with construction and bring back all the information I have from that. Um, does anybody have any questions? Lots of information. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty much on schedule from what we discussed last time, so it's going okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, are there any questions for administration? Sure. Uh, that looks pretty sharp. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much for your time. You. Um, with that, if I can get a motion to accept that for information. <laughs> Councillor Pope. I'll make the motion that we accept the Dark Park presentation as information. Thank you. Any Thank comments you. or concerns? All in favor? Gary? Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, moving on to our next item on the agenda, which is uh, Rainbow Road Oiling. Um, our, our staff report for information from City Director Cam. Good morning, Cam. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Here to provide an update, um, Rainbow Road condition update. I don't have a fancy report to give you. I'll just give you a verbal update at this time. Administration can bring the complete road and traffic count analysis report to Council whenever lead service has an opening. However, between June to August, the North Counter's average is over 27,000 vehicles. Per month in the South Counters average just over 20,000 per month. Between June to August, the city has applied 153 man hours for grading and watering. Just to be clear, grading is done to level out the surface and remove any ruts and smooth out the area where the road transitions from asphalt to gravel to help reduce the noise. Watering is done to help control the dust as well as, well as activate the dust control agents. So for, for dust control, the city has been using calcium chloride. This is widely considered the best practice in the industry. In North America, surrounding facilities all use this as well, and two applications have been applied year to date on that road. Calcium chloride is the most cost effective method, but we have looked at additional options as well. So, used oil is approved for dust control. Provincial regulations are required where the used oil must meet certain specifications and a maximum of two uh, applications allowed per calendar year. Used oil controls dust by essentially creating a crust on top of the surface and when applied to the top of the road. Putting down the product is usually messier and it can wreak havoc on cars as if, if it's not dried long enough. Um, and generally what happens is it starts to break apart when it deteriorates and then large chunks can, can come out and you do see larger potholes that does create that. Um, also, the cost of applying used oil right now to that 1.6 kilometer roadway is between two to three times more expensive than calcium chloride. So calcium chloride is a clear liquid that naturally tracks and retains moisture. Calcium chloride has an easy application process where it's sprayed from a truck and can be driven on a couple hours later. Once applied, the road will have a damp or wet look to it. One application typically lasts the entire summer. Other than the other benefit of using calcium chloride is it leaves a residue of the year over year, so you keep applying the water and it keeps coming back. Compared to oil and other available dust controls, liquid calcium chloride lasts and outperforms the other ones on all this study is done. Calcium chloride is the most environmentally friendly dust control agent available on the market, receiving the lowest toxicity reports compared to other products as well. Cities also reach other options such as asphalt binders, clear coat ceilings. This requires the city to provide a flat base surface and then about approximately 850 aggregate metric tons will be applied and then a clear coat some put on top of that. You do get a hard surface. That estimated cost has come in complete right around 250000 for that. Plus the city would have to do the base work was roughly around $35,000. So close to $300,000 to do that. The other options we have looked at is doing some of the um, MRO processes. We've asked some of those vendors if they can do a trial strip along that road. This is the time of the season right now that they're ending a lot of their projects. So they have said, depending on where they end their season, what they have left for material, they may be able to do some trials along that way, but they can't commit at this time, obviously, with their season just wrapping up. So happy to answer any questions you have with, with that update. Uh, Councilor, any questions? Cam, thank you very much, Cam. You're welcome. 
Um, yeah, I think it's apparent that uh, we've got we've got a fair amount of traffic on that road, which is um, which is good. <laughs> it shows that residents uh, prefer that or like that road for their reasons. Um, I think it is important that we look at uh, you know improving the road because we have a definition now or we have confirmation that residents are using that road um, and so similar to that appropriate you know dollars need to be put in that direction um, so with this information that you're saying you kind of mentioned a couple things there with uh, MRO and or rebuilding it um, do you can you bring back to council uh, those two in more detail yeah And is there a, is just those two, or is there a third? Or? Third would be paving, I guess, would be your third final option, right? But really, the other two are the most cost effective, short of doing the calcium chloride. Yeah, water. one of the one of the questions I had was um, with some of the developers as they're finishing up their paving. Um, I was wondering what that might be if we can get some savings on that if they're already here doing project. We can reach out again to them to see if they have any ending projects that may actually line up with our end of our season. That'd be great. <clears throat> uh, Council, any questions? Any further questions? Okay, thank you, Cam. Uh, if I could get a motion to accept that information uh, from Cam as information. Council Funk? Uh, make a motion that we accept the information on Rainbow Road uh, oil project as information. Okay, thank you very much. You. All in favor? Carried? Thank you. Um, at this time, uh, if we would take a 10-minute recess, uh, it's 10.20, let's say, so back at 10.30. That would be great. Thank you very much. <clears throat>
get back to <clears throat> moving on to on the agenda items uh, staff reports for decision item G and our first item is council strategic plan pages 31 to 49 which will be presented by Jerry Gatro from our strategic advisory group uh, good morning council mr. mayor uh, so this is kind of an extension from the last uh, council meeting where uh, a couple of councillors uh, asked to, you know, uh, I guess we prettied up the uh, last, uh, I'm going to say slideshow, uh, which we can probably bring that slideshow up, I believe. So what administration did is they, uh, they put, have two slideshows on them. The one is the original one that was actually given to you by um, uh, your, your consultant that uh, was used, and the second one is uh, that was done by administration just to kind of pretty things up, put pictures there. Uh, so we just we wanted just to make sure that um, that everyone's see, that everyone's seen the original, and then also the one that we kind of prettied up. So this is the original uh, slides that was actually given to council way back when, even before my time that I re that I looked at and reviewed. What color I have my dust paper? Come on, there we go. <clears throat> so, just want to make sure that uh, council concurs that this is the this is the one that was actually given to you guys in the very beginning. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Okay. Um, so, really, uh, uh, if you kind of go forward uh, to to the next uh, so the next slide. So, uh, th this is this is your vision uh, that that council put forward. Next slide, please. Uh, basically, your values, your fiscal responsibility, community trust, efficiency. And, uh, next slide, please. So that you know the and the, your priorities and the process, um, people, community building blocks. We can go to the next slide. Your big next steps uh, is what was there. Next slide. Okay, then this should be the one that was there presented last council meeting. So this is one we pre we presented uh, in the last last council meeting. So, I think it's a, through administration's eyes. Um, again, we're coming back to see if uh, you know we talk about framework and have this council at least adopt the framework of your strategic plan. And the reason why we're asking that is is to give administration uh, budget season's right around the corner, for an example. But um, is to give administration and the not only the residents some type of uh, awareness of really where council wants to go, how do we plan our budgets. So um, understanding that one that this is this was the pretty up one which maybe caused confusion uh, that's why we added the other one so we're we're here again just to look for direction of council to see if uh, they'd like to actually now adopt the framework as presented uh, initially and continue working on uh, your strategic plan uh, through the motion that uh, was created last council meeting where uh, a workshop would be uh, created between the end of September early October. Councilor Dean. Uh, thank you, uh, to the chair, to uh, Jerry. I believe you've already given me direction. Uh, so I believe that we accept it as information. I'd be comfortable again accepting this as information and that we were going to be utilizing uh, this information to uh, in the workshop to then come back at, again uh, at the end of September, early October. So that uh, I believe that, that would uh, meet your concern. Uh, I, I agree to your concern about having that uh, ready to go for budget season, which is right around the corner. Uh, but I believe that that would hit that concern. So I feel like we've already given direction, and I, I thought that the uh, path forward on this, so to speak, uh, was to be setting up our um, strategic planning uh, session. But that was the direction. As uh, through the chair to council dean, and and if if I. Um uh, sorry, I might have misunderstood then because I felt that the part of the uh, conversation that I had was this was the first time uh, that that uh, council has seen this part, which would have been with you know the pretty upsided document. 
and they wanted to make sure that they compared it to the other document that was actually placed uh, from your consultant back then, uh, and that's why it was kind of brought forward. And, and the direction that I that I understood was, yes, you accepted as information that current day, and you also gave a direction of administration to set up a workshop for the strategic plan. Uh, so I, I maybe misunderstood, and that's why I brought this both forward, just for that not only council can see, but the public can see that from one was from the consultant and one was from in, internally here that we just prettied up some pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Dean? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, and no, certainly I appreciate uh, seeing uh, the two. I, I think that that's really good, and um, I would like to see this council um, stay with uh, the decision that we had made last week, um, and I would love to see, um, I would like to know what the dates are. Uh, when we will be having that strategic plan, I thought that was a great idea. I know that's an idea that you've been talking about for a long time, uh, and that I fully support and endorse. You, you've talked a lot <laughs> about the idea of getting this council together, getting away, having some time together, and being able to talk about strategic plan. I have supported you all along in that idea. I think it's a fantastic idea, uh, and I would like to actually see this council just stay uh, with the decision that we had uh, made at the last council. Uh, Councilors, are there any other comments? Jerry, one of the things you're looking for is is to for council to adopt this as a framework from the work that we've done with our strategic planning um, consultants. Uh, so that was our initial plan, and, and again uh, through 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 uh, the the chair. If I uh, for some reason if I um, misinterpret the direction of council last meeting, I, I apologize for that. Um, you know, however, I, I felt that there was some confusion there, and maybe I just wasn't quite understanding the the, the direction, but. Um, you know, kind of going back to my report la last week, the last council meeting was exactly that. This is the framework of, of part one that the consultant helped, helped you guys uh, help council um, put together. If we go back to the original slide, and really it's, it's part really of the framework is if we can adopt even part of that framework, and, and I understand where Councillor Dean is going that, you know, we expand on all of this through a workshop. Um, at least give some type of direction uh, almost a year later uh, to administration and to, to the residents of really where this council wants to go. Um, you know, again, it's a council's decision. I'm, you know, I'm here for your direction. No, I think that, uh, I mean, last council meeting we had uh, some concerns uh, from some of the councillors that the, the uh, revised version um, wasn't uh, what they had uh, initially been a part of during the strategic plan. So it's nice to see that we have the original version that the consultants uh, created from what we had provided um, and the comparisons to see that they are, they are similar. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's appropriate that this was shown to show that clarity. Um, Councillor Hanley, you had a question? Yeah, I had a comment. If, if we back up one slide from here, and, uh, in that this is, you know, you can see the two are exact, they're word for word. Uh, mm -hmm. And on, on this slide, it basically talks about the, the next steps, and it says, you know, each of the strategy priorities have internal detailed action plans that will be developed over the next three months. The action plans will assess the capability for new initiatives, budget impacts, timelines, and performance metrics, right? So to me, it's, we've, we've done the framework portion. Uh, and, you know, accepting something for information is, so okay, that's nice information to have. But this is what we had, uh, as a group, agreed upon before as our framework, right? It specifically and clearly states that we're developing, you know, further detailed action plans. We've done that, you know, at various meetings in the past where we have a list of, of public items that Council is working on, a list of confidential items that uh, Council is working on. And we've given ourselves authority. Um, I don't see uh, an issue with adopting this as a framework because we've established the framework. The rest of the, the package is exactly what we had said before and what we had dealt with with uh, Maven strategies. And, and through, the, through the chair on that comment, um, last council meeting is the first time actually the public has seen uh, the part of the framework that uh, this council has been working on uh, for some time. So, True. Uh, Councillor Garay? Thank you. And that, <clears throat> through the chair, um, I'm still not quite sure as to why we're adopting the framework when we can uh, adopt this as um, our actual strategic vision once it's ready. Um, I'd rather, you know, adopt something that's fully done as opposed to that's, you know, just half cooked. 
um, I'll be happy to take this and as as information. Um, and a comment that was made that you know we as council uh, agreed on all this. Now I think we've gone through a lot of this. I don't know if we've agreed to all the elements of what uh, is presented, uh, including a lot of the language uh, that has been used uh, in this document. Not to mention, not, not to mention, there's um, some gr uh, grammatical errors as well. So um, I would be happy to accept this as uh, as information. I think it's a good start, but I just don't understand, you know, why, why are we accepting a framework when we can, in a few weeks, hammer this out and uh, adopt it as, uh, as a strategic vision? Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think is important to acknowledge um, is the fact that the work that has been done by Council um, in identifying the direction um, and that, that that is what we're looking to bring forward is what's been done by Council at this time and then from there uh, for Council to then complete the next steps in the process. Uh, as Councillor Hanley had brought forward, uh, this document um, was presented by our consultant team that we worked with on our strategic plan and it does identify specifically that the next over the next period of time three months that this would then transition from that into a full strategic plan so it's uh it's not something that council is making a decision on this is something that has been already decided um, previous to these meetings and we're simply walking through the steps that we already agreed to um, which is why it's identified in this document um, is there any other comments or questions otherwise i'd like to call a motion to accept this as our strategic envisioning planning framework. Councillor Narayan. Yes, uh, uh, thank you um, and through the chair. In the event if this motion does go through, uh, if I can request that the board's framework is specifically stated so that uh, people do not misconstrue this as our strategic vision, this is going to be merely our, uh, our framework. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, well that's, uh, I, I Agree with Councillor Ryan. Um, <clears throat> the intent is not to say that this is our strategic plan. <laughs> it is the first steps of it, though. <laughs> um, so, with that, uh, if I could request a motion to um, accept this uh, as our strategic framework for our strategic plan, our strategic plan framework, what words would you like to use? Yeah, I. Yeah. Right. Councillor Hanley, no, or, sorry, I, Councilor Hanley. I thought, uh, you had made the motion. I uh, just wondered whether or not you wanted to restate the motion. To oh, okay. Um, and what we call this? Um, I think it's. To, I guess to restate it or confirm. Um, is a motion to adopt our strategic plan framework. Does that seem like what we want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. any, any suggestions from Council to change that differently? Councillor D? What do we mean by framework? Like, uh, just like definition of that, because I, um, I, again, I feel like we had a really good book, uh, so I just want to know what that means. I, Councillor Funk? Um, I'm willing to give my understanding of what I think we mean by that as a council. Um, to me, the framework would be that um, we've been working on this plan for a long time, um, and administration and whatnot doesn't really have our strategic plan. Um, so it's kind of like a, to me, it's the framework, it's the pre-release of where we're heading as a council. And where we're at in the process, um, there might be a few things that we have to flesh out or hammer out yet as details. Um, but overall, this is the direction and the frame of what we want to do as a council. Any other comments, Councillor Vote? To me, um, <clears throat> every uh, every plan that you have, you've got to have some kind of a a guide or something like that. And I think that basically we're trying to overthink this a little bit. 
I think this is just basically a guide that's going to take us through things that we've awesome. been working on, and we need to just go ahead and set a date and a time, and we go through this together, as Councillor um, Dean has mentioned down there. Uh, I think this isn't, as we've said, this is not the strategic plan. This is just the guide that we're going to use to get us going uh, to, to get our strategic vision set up. And so uh, I, I fully support this, and uh, I support that we do it right away. Well, there's a lot of work that's been done. You can see there's... Um you know, a lot of effort and hours that were put into this by council and the consultants. So I think it's important that we adopt and acknowledge that. Uh, Councillor Hanel? Yeah, I was going to say, like, if, if you go back in, in the presentation, like, the first, after the first slide, it talks about our vision, that Chester Mary is a progressive and ex uh, inclusive community. Residents and business owners are actively involved in community life. All community stands uh, strongly by one another. Chester and people are, are what truly matter. Uh, you know, as you go through it, we, are, we want to ensure our municipal finances are solid. We have optimized the, our municipal processes. Ultimately, a sense of municipal uh, strength permeates throughout the community, enabling uh, more opportunity and growth. Uh, we're going to be guided by values related to our safety, and we can read off those. Uh, be fiscally responsible, uh, promote community trust, uh, uh, effectiveness, inclusion, right? Uh, so I, I think, you know, as, as far as the framework, I, I don't think there's any real, you know, what this means as far as a vision goes is these are the statements, these are the broad uh, compasses that we've all talked about, we've discussed, We've said this is what is going to be guiding when we get into the detail, as this slide says, over the next three months. We're going to be guided by those principles. And I think it's fair to for the community to know what principles we're going to be guided by. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, Councilor Dean? Uh, so if I may, um, I would like to offer, I know there's a motion over the table, so I can't make this as a motion. I would make this as a comment and then see the scopes. Uh, that Council use the information as presented as its framework for creating our strategic vision at the upcoming workshop. So I believe that encompasses everything that we just said. Absolutely. We want to use this as our framework for creating our strategic vision. That's exactly what I said. Well, uh, uh, Councillor Hamming, if I may, rather than a uh, strategic vision, our strategic plan, like the finalized plan, right? Because really that's, sure. that, that's what you're trying to say. You want to say vision and plan? Just, well, the, the vision, yeah, yeah, the vision is already sort of in here, and I think it's because that's that's all it is. It's like these are the steps we've we've talked about these. Yep. You know, these are the things. It's it's the same document as before, pretty up, right? They're going to guide us as we finish the plan, and we have more work to do to develop the details of that plan, mm -hmm. uh, and we need to be guided by these principles. Uh, Councilor, Funk, did you have a comment? No, oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so what I would look at potentially uh, what a restating our motion is the motion to adopt our strategic plan framework for finalizing our strategic plan. To finalize our strategic plan. Uh, I guess the, the next, sorry, speaking of. Councilor Hanley? Uh, our next one. Is that, you know, uh, for administration, is that is that sufficient guidance? Is that sufficient, you know? Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll speak on behalf of administration and what our take is on the, exactly the framework. Um, we're looking at this as, you know, we're, we're preparing a class today and, you know, this is just a kind of list and a bunch of bullet points. And really we're just in the, in the process of, you know, here's a whole bunch of stuff, put it on a piece of paper. And, um, you know, we're, we're at the very beginning of, of our, our, our lesson study really is where it's at. And, you know, hopefully through flushing things out, we can really say, yes, this is what we want to focus on. Um, and then through the, the workshop is then we're going to have our, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to draft, but, you know, I'm going to just go back to, you know, the, the school per se and say, here's our final paper. Yes, we're going to send it out. We're going to get it pretty. We're going to have the wordsmithing. We're going to have a bunch of things done. But really what council has done is saying, you know, here's our bullet points. This is what we want to work on. And then at the end of that meeting, here's our final, final thing. But it helps administration through 
conversation through budgets and through our, our staffing and when we're talking to people that this is what council's priorities are this is what they want to work on this is what they want to do just what councillor hanley said um, so that's the administration's interpretation of what this framework actually is so i wanted just to make sure that we're not saying this is your your vision your final document this is just the bullet points that we can start now helping you through that vision through administration uh, the second thing is is um, I know that uh, Councillor Dean asked roughly when the workshop is. It's it's in the works for the October 14th, 15th, 16th. Uh, we're still finalizing some details. Uh, that's the dates that kind of seem to work for everyone right this minute. Uh, but I, it's, it's not confirmed. We haven't sent out emails and we haven't booked anything yet. That was just the, the dates that were there. So, um, if I'm running through the mayor, it's 11th through the 14th. Oh, sorry, 11th You're through. in September. Oh, I, think. I feel better now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. <clears throat> uh, so again, Council uh, Councilor Dean. Thank you. Uh, it's been very to all the council. Uh, we all know language is important, and so I think for me, adopting something is different than using something. Uh, and so, um, uh, to me, I, I totally agree with the uh, concept of uh, utilizing this information. Uh, it has been stuff that we have talked about. Um, it has been stuff that uh, we, have, we have worked on. Absolutely, I acknowledge that. I acknowledge the work that was done by our consultant and by our uh, team in putting uh, this together in more of a um, bit of a plan here. Uh, but I think that this is the uh you would be using this to create that as opposed to i feel like once you adopt it that's the, there's a there's a big difference there to me in adopting this and utilizing it uh and so i would propose that we certainly use this framework uh to create um our strategic plan uh and that this we utilize that that both of them are probably up to the 14th Um, okay, one one idea I've got for restating the motion is a motion to adopt our strategic framework. And that that will be utilized for finalizing our strategic plan. Councilor yes, Hanley, can I just, uh, I, sure. <laughs> I wrote down real quick, council adopt this strategic framework for the use and the finalization of our strategic plan. Much better. <laughs> Let's go through this. Okay. So I'll, I'll rescind my motion. Um, uh, all in favor? Rescinding well, my motion. Yep, I agree. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Okay, so you want me to read the other one? And then, Councillor Hanley, if you proceed. Uh, I move that Council adopts this strategic framework for use in the finalization of our strategic plan. Okay, any questions or comments? All in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we're going to now. Okay. okay, moving on with our council meeting and moving on to item number two, which is the Marigold Library Agreement. Um, with the 2023 to 2024 per capita levy rates to Marigold Library System to support the library services for residents of Chester. Pages 50 to 88. Uh, do we know, um, City Director Kim, do we know if this is uh, something that I should be reading or is this a presentation to Council? This is 
the mayor and council. I believe they were to come and present today, so I'm not sure. You haven't heard either. Yeah, we haven't heard. So okay, I think we we can we can uh, move forward and come back to it if they come okay. a little later. <laughs> okay. Um, with that, we'll move on to item number three for our staff reports for decision, which is the 2022 community grant funding recommendations to council for ratification, uh, being presented by. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, your worship and members of council. My name is Olympia Lisando, manager of the Family and Community Support Services Department. And today I'm presenting the 2022 Community Grant Funding Allocation Recommendations. In late 2018, the Community Grant Program was created upon direction from City Council as a conduit for requests that were presented for donations and or sponsorships for local activities. The purpose of this grant program is to support community organizations that facilitate local activities which enhance amenities in sports and recreation, arts, culture, history, and projects that promote the social well-being of the residents of Chestermere. The 2022 call for proposals was facilitated during the month of August 2022. 19 applications were received for a total request of $210,418.20. 280 thousand was available which is comprised of the 130 that was budgeted for 2022 plus an extra 150,000 in non-profit funding allocated by city council the total amount recommended for 2022 was 176,000 Five hundred and eighty-seven dollars plus one thousand five hundred set aside for hemodialysis hemodialysis request. The amount available for carryover for 2023 will be one hundred and three thousand four hundred and thirteen dollars. On September 12, 2022, the Community Grant Committee recommended seventeen initiatives to be offered in 2022. $22,985 for Camp Chesterman for user engagement and program enhancement. $10,000 for Center for Community Leadership for the soundproof room for privacy. $2,500 for Chesterman Police Communications Committee for purchase of crime prevention materials for community events. 14,600 for Chester McCurley to replace ice scrapper. 20,000 for Chester Food Bank for IT enhancement. $9,402 for Chester Library Board, a mobile library on a bike with cart. 3,000 for Chester Senior Services for translation of uh, resource handbook to Punjabi. 3,500 for Create Kids Art Society for a kids festival in October at Camp Chestermere. 8,000 for Imagination Library of Chestermere for free books sent monthly to children 0 to 5 years old regardless of uh, family income. 5,000 for Older Adults Coalitions for Resource and Information Line. 5,000 for Olympus Boxing uh, Club to be uh, to be towards kids enrollment fees. 10,000 for Rocky View Chesterman Agriculture, Agricultural Society for the country fair um, in this past September. 5,000 for Rotary Club for the Orange Shirt Day event for truth and reconciliation. 35,000 for synergy connections and care and mental health programs. 15,000 for Tim Horton's Western Canada Pond Hockey Championship to go towards growing the event held in December 27 to 29 in Chester. 4,100 for Whitland Crisis Society for domestic violence awareness in Chester. And 2,000 for White Cappers to go towards ent entertainment and education uh, purpose. Recommended action that the Council approves the 2022 Community Grant 
funding allocations as recommended by the committee. Great, thank you very much. Jerry? Very very helpful. And if I may, um, if council chooses to, to go through this list, just to kind of help Councilor Dean out a little bit, if uh, maybe you leave Camp Chester alone, and put that segregated out so he can recuse himself, but allow him to vote on the other ones for the year. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council, thank you very much. Uh, is there any questions that anyone has? Councilor Hanley? Uh, just a comment. Uh, I'd like to, to thank you very much. Like last night's meeting was very informative. Andy and I both uh, enjoyed that very well, and it was very well managed and, and coordinated. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, it's great to see so many groups and um, benefiting. I see that there's still some some funds available. Yeah. Um, Councilor Hanley? It, yeah. In it, uh, I was also going to say, in addition, can we ensure that the agenda package is updated with the the latest information? Yes. In that the meeting occurred last night, and so for the document that people have in the public, they don't have the actual uh, document that you were just reading out. Yes. So, okay. Okay. So. Sorry. Great, thank you. That's great. Councillor Dean? Uh, if I may, can I speak to your comments about the sure. money being up? Um, I wouldn't mind if it's possible to see another round go out. I do know that uh, within the community, uh, from my other hat, uh, there's a little bit of confusion uh, on the idea of HSAB and if you already receive HSAB funding and if that works and things like that. And, um, I know that a number of organizations uh, did reach out and the city did a great job explaining that. I'm wondering, though, if because of that confusion, if some people who uh, receive HSAP and or United Way funding thought they weren't eligible, and so didn't apply. Uh, and so I would encourage uh, a possible second round or the carryover, whatever the case may be. I do know though, that there was a little bit of confusion. Nobody's fault. Mm -hmm. There was just a, there was just some questions around that. Uh, and so I just wonder if some of those other organizations may not have reached out. Uh, to know that they actually were eligible for the summit. Excellent. That's yeah. a good comment. Uh, any other comments? Mr. Hanlon? Yeah. Uh, during last night's meeting, we, we did talk about that. We did indicate that, you know, perhaps we should do another round, right? Uh, perhaps, you know, later in the year for people, things that people want to do, you know, over the winter months. Uh, or and, and then the other thing that was thrown out is just an idea uh, is the extra funding that's there that's there it is for the community uh, we as a, a council could basically ask the committee to do another round or we could use that that funding and and uh put it towards community events you know maybe do even a little bit more for the festival of lights or something else uh, at the end of the season uh, i think those are things that we should probably discuss or, or decide how do we want to do that because it is for the community yeah, no, for sure. How, how would we suggest uh, that happening? Is that is that like a workshop or is that um, people, we just, counselors submit, people submit ideas and we have a meeting? It should be in public to mm -hmm. review these ideas. Councillor Dean? I would encourage the committee to, uh, on exactly what you're saying, that Councillor Henley, uh, to um, the committee to give uh, further examples of the intention of some of this funding. Yeah. Uh, because I think that that would help uh, some organizations uh, um, with events that they're hosting within the community, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, because maybe they don't know um, that they could apply to this particular funding mm -hmm. for an event. If I was a betting man, I would say that uh, organizations are not aware that they could have you know, possibly access this for event funding. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so if that list came out, here are some other examples that you could use that are different than uh, the traditional HSAB, FCSS, uh, FCSS, you know, like funding, sorry, uh, that are different than that, um, I think you would see a greater response uh, for our patients. Yeah, I know that there was, um, even, even some of those discussions we had <laughs> a few months ago now with uh, some of the seniors program funding that we were talking about, and um, I haven't heard too much about that. But um, I think that's something that should be followed up. Make sure that we're trying to 
move forward some of these other initiatives that uh, we've discussed? Uh, Councillor Hanley? Yeah, I, I was also going to say uh, another thing that we, we discussed is uh, we're actually kind of late this year uh, in actually doing this. And, you know, uh, the anticipation from the committee was, was like we should be doing this much earlier in the year, giving people the opportunity. And there was some confusion as to, you know, who's eligible, who's not, what are the rules. Right, and the committee was going to say we should probably get together and provide some guidance on uh, how that should be applied. You know, and at least as a committee, make recommendations. Mm -hmm. No, excellent. <laughs> Lots to talk about around this subject, um, Councillor Dean. If I may, I'd like to commend the committee on um, the simplicity and clarity of the actual application. So filling this one out was mm. very clear. Uh, which uh, I may or may not appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> that part was really clear, so I appreciate that. Uh, and I do, I just think that the next step uh, for the committee, if I may encourage, uh, would be just that other list of ideas or further list of ideas of, hey, if you're holding this event, uh, then this could, there could be funding made available for that or, or things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the actual application on this one was really clear, really concise, um, and, and much simpler to do, which was very appreciated. And Councillor Hanlon? Uh, I was going to say, and, and the committee thought it would be paperwork was still a little extensive on the requirements and, and could be simplified a little bit more. No, exceptional. Um, okay, if we could move forward, <clears throat> I'd like to call for a motion um, approving the grant funding allocations, um, excluding Camp Chesterbeer, so Councillor um, Dean can vote. I was going to say, uh, are you going to name them off individually or are you just going to do the recommended actions? Can we um, name, can we have the entire list and exclude Camp Chestermere as in that, that form, Matt? Okay. okay. <laughs> Councillor Watt? I can make that motion. Sure, please. That council approves, I move that council approves the 2022 community grant funding allocations aside from Camp Chestermere as recommended by the Adjudication Committee. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Carried? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, if okay, I can get another motion. Uh, okay. Councillor Hanley? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Council approves the 2022 grant community, uh, community grant funding allocations as recommended by the Adjudication Committee for specifically Camp Chestermere. Thank you. Any comments or questions, Councillor Dean? Yeah, I will be abstaining from this whole uh, time. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? Harry? Thank you very much. Thanks again for all your work Thank to you. make this happen. Uh, Councillor Dean? Uh, with that approval, when, yeah. uh, <laughs> when can agencies expect? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I guess, sir. Yeah, when can agencies expect? That final day come through from the moment. Yes, uh, we'll meet again on Friday. We will send the letters. I'm sorry. Through your worship to Council and me. Um, Friday, we'll be sending the letters of, and the agreements, and then uh, we will set the check requisition for approval. Okay. Maybe at the end of October. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Um, just checking to see if uh, Mary Gold has come today yet. Not so much. Okay. <laughs> All right. With that, we'll move on to our next items. And if they, if we're lucky to have them come by today, we'll we'll, we'll squeeze them in when we can. Um, I believe that we won't have any additional items. All of our rest of our agenda today has been has been uh, completed. Um, before noon. <laughs> um, um, City Director Kim, do you know if, if they were intending on coming today? Like, uh, uh, have they mentioned anything if they're still on the way or is they, are they held up or? No. Uh, to the Mayor and Council, I'm not aware of why they haven't arrived. My only guess is that they have their dates mixed up. Yeah. Councillor Hanley? Yeah, uh, in going through the, the, the book, and the, this is an agreement uh, that's signed, but it's not specifically related to Chestermere, which, and that's the part that sort of confuses me, uh, yeah. as presented or amended. 
when you go through the document, uh, it's an agreement with the province. It's legislative, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it, it's almost like a request for you know us to approve the agreement. Mm -hmm. But it Which covers you know uh, the city of Chestermere, the town of Cochrane, the village of Concord, the town of Crossfield. Like the rules, basically, are going to apply to everybody. I believe that's why they wanted to present today to explain their their um, service and what they provide to our library. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for a motion, um, but we don't know what it was. Yeah, the right? motion in the uh, sorry uh, in the eScribe is uh, to accept the community. Uh, no, I'm sorry, wrong one. Back up. Is to accept the 2023-2024 Marigold Agreement uh, per capita levy rates uh, as presented or as amended. But I'm not sure we would even have the opportunity to amend the rates when the province is saying, here's the new contract. Basically, you have to sign it. Without presentation. Uh, Councillor Funk? Yeah. Um in addition to, or maybe a little bit of clarification. So Schedule C of the uh, presentation uh, or of the contract um, actually lays out the rates um, that would be charged. So wonder, this is just a guess that they're looking for approval of those rates. What do they do that? Uh, that is 87 of 93. Yeah. So, and I'm assuming we fall under part two, but I'm not. Right, and I think that's why they want to present it. It will also impact the library budget. So having this presentation ahead of time when the library um, foundation or board comes forward, we'll know what the, how Marigold impacts that budget. So again, I don't think we get a lot of say in that. No. Um, it's just whether or not we're accepting to uh, follow that schedule. Councilor Dean? Um, at the risk of breaking a number of uh, points of order here, I'm wondering if we should call a quick recess and confirm with the library if there's an urgency on this from their perspective. Because I wonder if this contract, so to speak, as we pointed out, Council Hamlet, uh, affects them in any way, if there's a timeline on that. So I wonder if we should recess and then if there's not an urgency from their perspective, then perhaps we're able to table this. But if there is an urgency, then perhaps uh, give life services an opportunity during that recess to sort out that urgency again. Yeah. And I certainly yeah. will go down during yeah. recess yeah. and speak to the them. The is yeah. kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, any other comments, Council? I was, I was just going to say, uh, for the Schedule C, just for everybody's background here, is I, I pulled out the old contract. Mm -hmm. uh, so in Schedule C, which is on that page 87, for Part 1, uh, it's, you know, the 2023 rate was, is 1085, used to be 1050, so it's 35 cents. Uh, the 2024 rate is uh, 1096, it used to be 1074. Mm -hmm. So these are relatively small numbers. Uh, in part two, where it's uh, $6.35 uh, per capita, used to be 615. Uh, where it's 646, it used to be 624. Uh, and in the part three uh, for the municipal boards, uh, 450 per capita hasn't changed. It's this exact same number. So these are relatively minor changes, um, right? Uh, just real and more probably more reflective of, of inflation since right. the original. And I, I'm guesstimating the reason they wanted to do the presentation as well is so that the residents understand the value of what Marigold provides to our, our library and for them to understand what those costs are. So they, it's more of a presentation. Uh, Jerry? Um, so there was, I, I have to agree with Councillor Dean, if yeah. just recess and you know, I don't know if they want to present. Uh, it's not really the administration's job to present on behalf of Mary. No. And, yeah. um, <laughs> part, of, part of the rates that we're talking about is a per capita rate that is set by the province to li library boards. It's uh, legislated. Yeah. Um, you know, so you, and you pay on a per capita basis. But I'm not, I don't want to speak on behalf of Mary yeah. Gold and uh, try to make any assumptions. So I would just assume that we recess to see if they want to yeah. present and if not, we we'll take one until a, a, sure. another, another meeting. Um, sure. Can we recess till uh, 1130 then? Yep. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right back. Thank you.
I, <clears throat> thank you everyone for your patience. Um, we're just learning up some new information. Um, at this point, Marigold, uh, there's been a mix up in scheduling. So we'll be looking for them to come back and, and we'll put them on a future council date. So at this time, um, we're looking to conclude today's uh, council meeting. And with that, I'll ask for a motion for adjournment. Councillor Fote. I'll make the motion that we adjourn at this time. Great, thank you very much. All in favor? Carried.